All right, so let's talk about the history of antibiotics. And if we're gonna talk about the history of antibiotics, we first better know what an antibiotic technically is. So we've talked about disinfectants and antiseptics before. So the difference between an antibiotic and an antiseptic is <clears throat> not always perfectly clear. Um, the original definition of the term uh, defined by uh, Selman Waxman uh, means a chemical, let's actually go in here, a chemical produced by a microbe that interferes with the growth of other microbes. So um, that was kind of the original definition, uh, but it would actually exclude most of the things that we call antibiotics today. Um, for our purposes, an, the key to an antibiotic is specificity. Sp something that specifically affects microbes to a much greater degree than it affects anything else. That key factor is specific toxicity. Um, we're going to start in the pre-penicillin era. Right, still kind of relatively recently, but uh, but before the development of true antibiotics. So in 1910, Paul Ehrlich theorized about magic bullets, something that you could have that would go into a patient and kill the bacteria or the microbe without actually hurting the person, right? That's, that's the way they thought about it at the time. Um, and Paul Ehrlich spent a long time looking for chemical magic bullets. He discovered a compound called Salverson. Uh, Salverson was an arsenic compound, which was effective at treating syphilis. It killed uh, Trepanoma palladium, the bacteria that causes syphilis. Just one problem. It was an arsenic compound. So, uh, yeah, arsenic is a poison. And while it did have some ability in some patients, some patients did... Um, there, like you could kill the bacteria before the patient died. It was a pretty narrow walking area, and sometimes it had uh, uh, it killed the patient instead of the bacteria. So it wasn't really a magic bullet. It was still pretty lethal to the patients. I mean, more likely than not, you could treat it, but you were still going to make the patient extremely sick. A uh, number of years later, in 1932, uh, Gerhard Domak used a dye called Prontosil to treat strep infections. Um, and Prontosil actually had pretty good effect against strep infections. So why isn't this our first antibiotic? Well, Prontosil didn't actually have any effects on strep by itself. Um, you could have like a plate growing strep and pour Prontosil on and it didn't do anything. The strep did not care. It wasn't until later that we found out what was actually going on. Um, when you administer Prontosil to a human, uh, our metabolism converts Prontosil into sulf uh, sulfonilamide which is a true antibiotic. But so uh, uh, Gerhard Domak was very, very close, but did not have a true antibiotic. All right. So we'll actually go back a little bit in time from Prontosil to Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming is the guy who gets the credit for discovering penicillin. 
And in a moment, I'll tell you why I think he might get too much credit for it. But still, so 1928, so this is before Prontosil by a couple of years. Uh, Alexander Fleming was a biologist. He was working uh, with bacteria and he noticed that some of his plates had gotten contaminated. He apparently wasn't very good at aseptic technique. Um, some of you may have had that experience yourself. I certainly have. I've had many plates contaminated over the course of my life. But um, what he noticed was that the mold contamination on his plate, uh, like no bacteria, he was working with staph bacteria at the time, no bacteria would grow close to the mold. And so he theorized that something the mold was making, something about the mold was killing staph bacteria. And um, so he kind of did some work on it. Uh, he found that if you took this mold, and the mold is named penicillium now, um, if you, you could take this mold and you could like juice it. You could kill the mold, blow it up, and pour the mold juice on bacteria, and like the bacteria die. All right? So that's pretty cool. And, um, and he tried to isolate just exactly what the chemical in this mold juice was that was killing the bacteria, and he was unable to purify it. So he couldn't actually figure out what the compound in this mold juice was that was doing the killing. Um, so he wrote up his results, published it, stuck it in the back of his, you know, lab, and then went off to go investigate something else. And Alexander gets the credit for this discovery, but um, to be totally honest, if things had been left up to him, we would not have discovered uh, penicillin because he just like, he went, yeah, well, that's kind of cool. I'm going to stick it in the back of the fridge and then, you know, just get on doing what I was doing before. Uh, and he did never bother to completely work it up. The people who did actually work it up and did actually make the, the first purified penicillin were Ernst Chain and Howard Florey. Uh, this was in 1941, and uh, there was some stuff going on in 1941 you might have heard of called World War II. There was suddenly a huge need for things to treat people who had wound infections. Um, in the pre-penicillin era, like, you could get wounded. Like, maybe you got shot in the hand or the shoulder. You would still quite possibly die because the wound would get infected and then you'd die of the infection. Like, there were, I mean, there were still lots of people who were wounded, but uh, a lot more people died than were wounded. And a lot of them died simply because of infection rather than from the trauma of the bullet wound itself. So turns out that when you're in a massive world war, suddenly a lot of funding and a lot of volunteers for tests become available. Uh, and Chain and Flory were able to actually purify penicillin from the extract of the mold. And they got it in its pure form and they gave it to a patient who had a staph infection and uh, things were doing pretty good. He started to recover, got better. Uh, and then they ran out of penicillin and um, the bacteria came back and killed him. So the experiment was a success, but the patient died. Um, but now they knew what they were doing. They, they got the right chemical. They just got the dosage wrong. They weren't prepared with enough of it. So they went, they purified more of it. They got another uh, patient with a wound infection and this time they had enough penicillin to treat the course of the disease and the patient recovered and we enter into the modern era of medicine. Um, many wounded in World War II uh, were treated with penicillin. It but, you know, it was not the most important thing for winning the war, um, but was probably 
from our perspective, the most useful invention in World War II, at least for humanity. Uh, penicillin itself is actually a kind of crappy drug. The, the, the penicillin, the raw penicillin, that uh, Chain and Flory purified from uh, the um, purified from the mold is not a great drug. Um, it's pretty narrow spectrum against gram positives, uh, and it um, is eliminated quickly from the body. So you have to give somebody a lot of it. You basically have to get like kind of constant doses of it because your body gets rid of it really fast. And um, it, uh, it can't be absorbed by the intestines, so it had to be administered by IV. So none of that makes for a really awesome drug. But many, many drugs have been derived from that original penicillin. This is the original penicillin core. And we've developed a whole cadre of drugs based on it. Uh, metamicillin, right, which you can see here, um, still has that central penicillin core here, but it's got some extra bits. Uh, methicillin, right, which you see here, uh, still has that penicillin core. Um, but it has a different substitution on it. Uh, Piperacillin, which you can see down here. Um, lots of others. Ampicillin, amoxicillin, all those cillins. Um, these are what we call semi-synthetic antibiotics. So a natural antibiotic is something that is produced by a microbe that is produced in nature. So the original penicillin that Chain and Flory purified was a natural antibiotic. A fully synthetic antibiotic is something that was just created in the lab. It wasn't based on any natural product. We do have a couple of classes of antibiotic that are fully synthetic. The sulfa drugs are fully synthetic. Um, but, uh, the vast majority of the antibiotics that we use today are semi-synthetic, meaning that we start with a natural product and then modify it to change its function. Some of these modifications are to, uh, make the drug more, uh, broaden its spectrum to make it more effective. Um, some of these modifications make the drug more easily absorbed into the bloodstream so that um, you can take it as a pill rather than as an IV injection. Uh, some of the modifications make it so that your body doesn't metabolize it as quickly so that it stays in the blood longer and you don't have to have so high a doses of it. Um, and um, some of the modifications, particularly methicillin, was specifically designed for bacteria that had become resistant to penicillin. Um, but you can see that all of them have this core penicillin molecule here, including what is called the beta-lactam ring, which is this square thing here. All penicillins will have this beta-lactam ring, though not all antibiotics will. All right, so that's the basic history of antibiotics.